Hey folks, Nathan here. Now I don't know about you, but one of the most exciting parts about Learning Resolve for me was finally getting ready to take on client projects. You spend a couple years developing your skills, figuring out a color workflow that works for you, and truly understanding how to manipulate an image, but there's a couple things that you should know that I wish I knew before getting into client work. So let's go in for a deep dive. First and foremost, importing a timeline is crucial. And today we're gonna to show how to do that with an XML file. We go into file and we come down here to import. We go down to timeline and we find our XML file that's been provided to us by the editor of the project. We then select open. They have a number of different options that you can choose. And I recommend discussing with the editor to nail down things like where you wanna start the time code, what resolution you wanna go for. These sorts of things, definitely important to discuss with the editor of the project. We then select okay. And would you look at that? 17 out of 17 clips were not found. That's not great. But all it really actually means is that the editor kept the files in a different location than you have them now. So we just need to locate them. In this example, we have them in my A drive down in trailer data, trailer footage. We then select OK. And now we see that one of 17 clips were not yet found. I'm gonna select no, and we're gonna see what that one clip is. And as we check our log, we can see that it's an audio file that's missing. And as we look at our timeline here, we can see that it's, well, it's the music for the trailer, which doesn't really matter to us because we're just dealing with color. So we're going to carry on. And we can hit Shift Z on the keyboard to see the entire timeline, though we don't know if it's correct. We need to compare it to the reference clip, but be sure to make bins for your clips and timelines and everything else because, well, there's no harm in being organized. So to validate our timeline, we need something to compare it to. Well, we go into our media page and we see that the editor set over what they called a trailer ungraded reference, which is a reference render of the trailer that's not graded at all. It just shows you the timing and orientation of the clips. So that's great. Let's drag that into our media pool and head back to the editing page. Now you could drag it onto your timeline and then go back and forth between certain sections and note differences and make your changes like that. But of course there's a better way. So we're going to delete this. So we need to get our dual viewer up. So we're going to close up the inspector to give us a little more space to work with here on a single screen. And we're going to select this option for dual viewer mode. Now by default, it selects the source here and we can go through and it's referencing our reference trailer, which is great. But if we try to play our trailer underneath, you can see that doesn't work. So what we need to do is we need to set this to offline and then we need to drag it into the viewer. Now it's linked up in our dual viewer and you can make note of some of the differences. Like this first shot is flipped. Now you could note these changes in a side by side view, or if you right click on your viewer, you then have the ability to do a number of different wipes. So we're going to select vertical wipe, and then we're going to go back so we can see our inspector. And as you can see, it doesn't match at all. But if we flip it horizontally, now we get a match and we just go through our trailer and do that. And you're able to see another issue. They're not playing back properly. Well, if we right click on this clip, and we change our clip speed, we note that it's playing at 9.4%. I don't know why it did this, but this is the joys of importing timelines. So what we do is we increase that, and then it's a matter of lining it up. And you have a number of different viewing options. For example, if we don't want to do a wipe, we just want to check the difference. We can do that, and then we get to see all the differences between the two shots, and we can start resizing to get everything to line up. So you can deliver your client exactly what they're looking for. And you continue to do so until your trailer matches the reference file. Now let's say you're finished grading and you need to deliver the project to the editor so they can do their delivery on their end. Now you could render it all out as one long file, but that really won't give the editor any flexibility if they do need to make some changes or add some transitions or whatever it is that they may want to add to the project after you've finished. So what we can do, we can select in our presets, go all the way over to the end, and you see we have a few options. If they're working within Final Cut Pro, Premiere, Avid, you have a few ways to send them the project. We're gonna show this in Premiere. So now what we're doing is we're rendering out each of these individual clips into whatever codec we wanna choose. You can choose whatever format and codec works for you. In this case, I'll just show with DNX HR at 10 bit. And what I like to do is go down to my advanced settings, go all the way to the bottom here. And do you see this add frame handles? What I want to do is I want to add 24 frame handles. And what that's doing is that's adding 24 frames before and 24 frames after the selected clips that we're adding. Now they'll import fine, 
but it'll give the editor some flexibility if for some reason they want to do some type of fade between clips, or if they want to do some retiming of a certain clip, then they have the ability to do that. And then we just add that to our render queue and we render the project. And once that renders, you can check out what we're going to send to the editor. We have our 17 files here and our XML document that we'll send over to the editor and they'll be able to fit into the project easy peasy. So with all these techniques, the most important element is the communication between you and the editor of the project. You want to be sure that you're both getting what you need to work together easily. So if they give you an XML with like 20 video tracks and transitions out the wazoo, you need to tell them that that's just not going to work. And before you go matching everything to the reference trailer, maybe you should ask them if they need it to match because they may want to still make changes after you deliver the file to them. So that open communication can potentially save you both a lot of time and just have you work together better. So communication is key. So now that you've put in the hours practicing, you've taken your training courses and you've nailed down these basic techniques and you feel confident within DaVinci Resolve, well, you're ready to start putting yourself out there and charging clients for your services. So if you're looking to score some extra credits, I do recommend that you work with a color managed workflow, just making it that much easier to switch color spaces if they want to go from, let's say, Rec 709 to 2020 or P3 and being able to create and deliver a DCP or a digital cinema package in case the project needs to go to a movie theater gets kind of awkward if they ask you to do that and you say, well, I don't know how. <laughs> I'll leave some links down in the description to teach you how to do both those things. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay. Bye.